Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Dragon Ball Edition. Today, we are going to be talking Dragon Ball Super Chapter number 83. And we have our Dragon Ball expert here with us, Mr. Mitchell Oso. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, doing pretty fantastic. How about yourself? I am doing well. I am doing well. So today we're talking about Dragon Ball Super Chapter number 83, Bardock vs. Gas Part 2. We finally get the conclusion of this fight that happened 40 years ago. And we're going to talk about it, talk about what's going to happen next time. If this fight was disappointing in our some things that we thought of on our own and then go from there. So, Mitch, take it away. All right, let's get started. This is going to be a uh, probably a quick one, to be honest with you, because the chapter is um, pretty pretty short compared to uh, some of the other chapters, um, at least in the sense that um, there's a lot of fighting. Um, dialogue's pretty small, but um, pretty good nonetheless. Um, you do have to kind of bear with me unless, Martin, you want to start because, um, uh, oh, nope, there it is. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I had the manga chapter pulled up and uh, it was not loading. So let's get started here. So uh, chapter 83. Title Bardock versus Gas Part Two. Um, we see, you know, we're still in the flashback here. Um, um, gas. Um, he um, he pulls out one of his energy maces or whatnot, and uh, he's about to go and just, you know, starts smacking Bardock with it. And sure enough, well, Monedo, while still holding uh, Granola, basically tells um, Bardock that um, that he should just, um, you know, get away as far as possible. He's done everything he can to protect them. There's no reason to lay down um, his life for them. And um, Bardock is in shock and says, um, you're crazy. And um, Gas makes the comment um, that um, that he should mention that um, uh, Bardock could flee now, um, but the sands aren't fated to last much longer anyways, um, as Gas knows that the sands are going to die. and. Bardock, having no clue what that meant, asks him what he meant. And Gas just shrugs it off, says nothing much, just something that Alec was talking about. And um, Bardock says, enough. I'm just going to you know, beat the crap out of you. And it's you and your gang that has no future. And it shows Bardock throwing a big old key blast over at Gas. And Gas is dodging it and uh, jumps up in the air and then brings down that mace um, at uh, Bardock. Uh, Bardock uses both of his uh, arms, crosses them, and blocks it. And uh, Bardock is in severe pain due to um, the attack. And um, but just Bardock, just you know, being resilient, grabs a mace, um, throws gas around, uh, throws him far away, and um, he tells Monado that this is his fight now, and that um, they're in the way, and they should get out of there. Monado is in shock, and um, we just see more and more fighting. Of Bardock and Gas. Um, Gas says that you know his blows are not, you know, they're, they're as he describes them as pinpricks. So just saying that Bardock is weak, and um, Bardock just keeps attacking. And Gas um, uses a technique to, um, well, he, he like semi transforms into his uh, maybe his semi instinct state, not the one in which Goku and Vegeta and Granola are currently fighting, but kind of like a half power kind of deal. But this shocks. Um, he uses like a shocking power to um, uh, zap Bardock. Bardock goes flying a little bit, not too much. And then we see that Monado has made it back to his little um, hut and he pulls out the two Dragon Balls. And um, he states that using the Dragon Balls for our own benefit is forbidden, but it should be okay if it. If my wish helps someone from another planet, I mean, really stretching apparently the truth um, of uh, what he can use these drag balls for. But hey, teach your own. So back um, to Bardock, um, he's getting punched around, and um, Bardock's kind of in shock that Gas is able to adjust his power levels, and um, and then Gas just makes a remark that you know he's not even at full power. And he suspects that Bardock has lost the will to fight back. Bardock basically says, mm, no, yeah, I'm going to keep fighting. 
uh, this agitates gas and gas flies in and gives Bardock a good kick and to the abs and then um you know smacks him in the back head sends him to a rock formation um destroying the rock formation though a little bit um shows that um um well past the rock formation i should say that uh, monado has wit or uh, summoned the dragon and uh, the dragon in this next panel is asking um what is the wish that monado wants and monado quickly responds with send bardock back to his home planet and um we see that um sort of like when Purunga um was um told to um send everyone um back to um to the planet. Wait, hold on, I'm having a complete brain fart. No, it wasn't Purunga. It was um it was Shenron. It was Shenron whenever Goku was flying back from Namek and they told him just to, you know, teleport Goku to Earth and Shenron taught, spoke to Goku, and Goku declined. Same thing that kind of happened here. The dragon, which uh, we're going to learn his name um, here in the next couple chapters. Uh, well, actually, not chapter. I don't know why I said that. The next panel here. The dragon's name is Tarambo. Um, I don't think we knew that from the other chapters, but um, at least now it's a, a nice refresher. Uh, Tarambo asks, um, hear me, Bardock, it is Monado's wish I should transport you back to your home planet, Vegeta. Uh, Bardock, completely in shock um, by this, uh, questions who is this voice that's in his head, and Gas is confused as well, just looking at Bardock talk to himself. And um, Gas notices the dragon out in the distance and is in shock that he even sees that. And uh, Tarambo tells Monado that um, Bardock has refused. Bardock says that um, he would uh, rather, as a Saiyan, he would rather die than run from an enemy. And he charges at Gas and gives him a punch because Gas was still um, um, distracted by the dragon. And um, Gas, once again, just insults uh, Bardock's strength, just saying that his attacks barely tickle. And he just kicks Bardock and just you know beats him up again. And um, now um, Monado is talking um, to um, Bardock um, telepathically, probably through the dragon or something. Says, um, um, asks him to listen, and um, Bardock tells him, "I wish you wouldn't put voices in my head." And uh, Monado says that you showed a real moral fiber, saving us back there. Um, I've got no doubt that the kindness in your heart is going to save someone else someday, and that's why he needs them to live. And um, Bardock says that he doesn't take orders from anyone, and I'm not leaving this place until I've beaten them. And Bardock is just completely focused on defeating Gas. And um, Monado um, pleads with him, uh, what is it going to take to make you reason? Fine, then tell me, is there another wish I could make for you? And um, he says, I'm just trying to help. And um, Bardock says, what's this all about anyways? Are, are you making a wish on a shooting star or something? Because it, and Bardock does not understand the, you know, the wish making dragons makes sense. But um, um, Bardock does make a request and that uh, his wish is that his uh, sons end up thriving. And um, so that is uh, the wish that is made. And um, Bardock just continues the fight we see the rest of the heaters though um alec and um mackie and oil um they're looking over in the distance and see that you know gas and bardock are still fighting um they're kind of surprised that it's still you know going on they they thought that gas would handle the sand pretty well and they notice that over at um um, where moneda was that the dragon balls have dispersed and uh they're going you know they're wherever their resting place is now that they split. And um, they they make the remark that that was close to where um, that they were um, fighting, but Alec know, knows that it was near the Namekian's hut, so he knows that's where uh, Monado lived. And um, Oil makes the joke that, you know, he's making wishes for tasty food, and Mackie tells him to quit being an idiot. Those aren't shooting stars. Okay. Um, just comic relief there, I guess. Um, Alex says that he is curious, so he's going to go check it out. 
and he orders Mac and oil to go um, and uh, prepare to greet uh, Frieza when Frieza arrives or arrives. And um, we go back to Monado. He says that 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 was the right idea. A wit that um, making a wish to create hope for the future is the right thing to do. Um, he says that selfish wishes can only bring about doom and that he was about to make a grave mistake. Okay. And then he looks back into his hut where Granola is sleeping and he says, I'm meant to protect what hope we've got left with all I've got. And well, back to Gas and um, Bardock. Uh, Gas is just beating the hell out of um, Bardock with some energy blasts. Sends uh, Bardock flying um, and then just keeps just shooting a barrage of um, blasts at him. And we can see that um, um, this is kind of taking a slight toll on um, gas. And um, and uh, gas just can't believe that Bardock is just not going down. Uh, he approaches him, grabs his tail, and then just starts flinging him around. Um, and whatnot, and as he's flinging him around, um, he gives him one whip, and Bardock's tail gets ripped off. And um, Gas makes a remark that, "Well, uh, no more eight form for you, and um, it's over now." Um, and he generates a spear and um, throws it over at um, Bardock, who is still trying to, um, you know, catch his bearings from being flung around there, and. Um, and then we see that um, Monado comes um, out of nowhere and um, I don't want to say intercepts, but I mean, he gets blasted by the spear in his left shoulder and um, he's bleeding and Bardock is in shock. And um, Monado says that, sorry, before, I, but now that he's ready to uh, deck Granola no matter what. So do me a favor, Bardock, and win this one for us. And Gas is now losing his cool as. Um, Every time he tries to, as he says, you know, those two are just disrupting his work. And then Bardock, or Bardock, Gas, um, he transforms to his full power self that um, we saw in the previous chapters, but not at the, his rampage form, I should say. Um, as we've seen this rampage form, but then he, you know, he collected his thoughts and became conscious and, and then he became the gas that, We've been seeing fighting Goku at the end there before this flashback, but yep. So he's in like berserker mode, and um, I'm like repeating myself here. Um, yes, yeah, just beating the shit out of um, Bardock and Monado sends him flying, and um, uh, Monado gets tossed into a rock formation, and the rocks, um, you know, crumble on him, kind of takes him out of the fight here, and Gas grabs Bardock by his throat and says that. Um, Says him to him as he lifts him up that the Namekian you sought to protect is gone, and soon I'll track down and kill a kid. And as you die, know that you failed to that you failed to protect anyone. And Bardock, just continuing to be resilient, says that that's not your call to make, and I'm not dying before I've beaten you. Um, and uh, just generates a key blast and uh, blasts um, gas rain rain his chest, and this breaks um, gas's grip on Bardock and Bardock. Uh, just starts wailing, wailing on him and um, kicks uh, gas towards a, a rock formation. And um, Bardock is in shock that gas is, um, well, he still has gas in him. I mean, it was just honey right there. And gas starts asking Bardock, he's like, what do you hope to achieve? Why, why fight a battle that you can't win? Is this a, a atonement? Um, as you face death for the sins of all sands, protecting the child, um, Bardock says no. Um, Gas assumes then maybe it's revenge, giving into your rage, killing us, um, or giving into your rage over us, killing the Namekian and the Cerulean woman. Um, Bardock says nope. And um, Gas, he's just like, oh, okay, why do you want to fight? What's going through your head, your head in this battle? And at this moment, Gas charges at Bardock, um, just uh, furious. And at this moment, um, Bardock um, has a somewhat of a transformation um, out of the blue. Um, an aura um, develops around him, 
and right then and there, um, he intercepts the um, gas's punch. Uh, gas is completely in shock, and Bardock says, "Isn't it obvious by now? In a life and death battle, what sort of idiot would think about anything else besides victory?" Right? <laughs> Excuse me. So, um, the next panel we get um, a, a two-page um, illustration. Um, side to side, it's pretty nice. It, it shows Bardock in this, you know, his uh, whatever transformation this is, and um, gut punches um, gas and, um, you know, does some serious damage. And he says, I fight when there's an enemy I want to beat down and nothing more to it. And then he uses a key blast and um, shoots him uh, in the stomach and launches him far away. And gas doesn't understand how he's doing this. Uh, and that he makes a remark that Sands have never ascended to states beyond the Great Eight. And Bardock says, Terry, you're ignorant, uh, and, and that's my fault? Nah, no. Um, and, he, and he says that Sands have a way of growing and evolving every time that we push past our limit. Um, this seems to be the theme of this entire arc. Actually, it's the theme of every arc, passing your limits. Um, and Gas says that's, that's absurd. He represents the limit that no, you know, sand can surpass. Um, and um, um, gas, um, you know, says that it can't be. And Bardock just, you know, just keep beating the hell out of him. And Alex shows up and he's witnessing that gas is getting his ass beat and says, Ugh. He, he went and left or let his inner nature loose. All right. And we see that. Um, now Bardock is going to end this fight. Um, he, he charges up a, a huge key blast, and he blasts it right at um, Gas. Uh, knocks Gas unconscious and back to his child form, so he's he's not in his berserk mode anymore. Bardock just you know, collapses in in exhaustion. Um, Alec flies over. And he's looking down at gas and he's like, I didn't think that you'd lose control after unleashing yourself. Uh, that's a real shame. Uh, we'll have to double down on training. And he picks up gas's unconscious body and then um, notices that Bardock is still alive, just in shock. And um, Bardock asks, he's like, I thought you were loyal to Frieza. And um, Alex states that when it comes to business, there's the hand you show and the hand you don't is part of Alex's character that um, he's a schemer, always has been, so he's always just one step ahead. And yeah, he asks and Bardock, he's like, speaking of, um, your kind doesn't even know what Frieza is really planning, right? And Bardock, just confused, and he's like, uh, you say answer such gullible saps. Uh, while you're in a day's kit or playing catch-up, don't be surprised if a meteor drops on your head. And um, Bardock demands that uh, he explain himself, and um, Alex says, that, wouldn't you like to know? And then he pulls out his pistol, and he shoots um, Bardock um, in his uh, right arm. Yeah, that was his arm. And, um, and then uh, the blast just um, sends Goku, or Goku, goodness gracious, what a night. Um, Bardock over the, the cliffside into a forest. Um, Alex is kind of frustrated that he missed, and um, he goes over to the edge, and um, he gets a call that uh, uh, from Mackie saying that the uh, Frieza ship is uh, incoming. You need to get your butt over here. And Alec, frustrated, says that he's on his way. And then he just starts randomly blasting into the forest. He says, whatever. It, it, he doesn't need any help to die after that. Right? And he grabs gas, and he flies away. And Arnok's just laying in the forest, just hurt as can be. Um, Monado gets up from that rock crumble formation that uh, he was in, and he makes his way down to um, Bardock, and um, he's in shock that Bardock is still alive. Bardock would say the same thing to him, and uh, they're a little chit-chatting there, and um, next to him, uh, and they don't at least notice it at this moment here, but they, they will next chapter, um, um, Bardock Scouter is um, laying right next to him. And um, Monado says, um, uh, it takes more than that to put a Namekian down. Um, you, you don't say, or then Bardock responds with, you don't say. Good. I take it the uh, kid is okay, too. And um, Monado says, uh, yep, 
he is. Those thugs left um, us for dead and headed off. You won the Battle of Bardar. And the, la- the very last photo is a close-up to the Scouter, which is obviously the Scouter in which Goku, Vegeta, Monado are listening to this entire dialogue. So, but uh, that's it. That's that's the chapter. Um, next chapter, it says here, comes out on May 19th. So uh, mark that on your calendars. It's not the 20th, but it's the 19th. And, uh, yep, so... Uh, Martin, where do we start? It's a short chapter. There's just a couple things to note, unless you got some other things in which you like to uh, poke our brains with. Um, no, we could just because it's really a short chapter, so we could just go. So let's let, let's just kind of go through panel, like panel by panel. I mean, we're starting to fight. Um, some things of note here, you know, gas is saying, you know, the basically the, the fate of the hands. You know, they're going to die. And I don't think there's really anything there to talk about. Um, obviously, that frees is sharing his thoughts with the heaters um, and whatnot. Um, I did chuckle. Um, wow, you might be thinking of something. Um, I did chuckle with um, uh, page 18. And this was uh, Monado um, after he made the wish, right? And he says, Selfish wishes can only bring about doom. I, don't, don't, I texted this to you. Um, don't have Monado watch GT because that is quite the exact opposite <laughs> of, of GT. <laughs> Selfish wishes um, um, actually created of the seven shadow dragons, you know, the most like, or yeah, the selfish wish, the most selfish wish created the most kind-hearted shadow dragon. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. And then the the selfless wishes create the worst. So um so yeah. Don't don't watch Minato. Don't let's don't watch GT. It, it contradicts yourself. But again, depending on who you are, um, GT's not canon, but oh well. You know, everyone has their own interpretation of philosophical means about these wishes, but regardless. Um but um, I'm trying to think. We could um, discuss the tail popping off. That part is a little interesting because I can't remember exactly, but didn't Bardock have his tail when Frieza blew up the planet? He did. So in terms of illustrations, um, either A, something's going to get retconned, or B, it's just them forgetting, right? Like, unless Bardock grows it back on his travel to, you know, planet Vegeta. Well, that was something I was going to bring up, too, because we're assuming this was the last mission Bardock had before planet Vegeta was blown up. And so why he's coming back, looks at Goku. One of the first things is like, hey, I have this bad feeling I'm going to send Goku on a ship to Earth. But we don't know how much time has passed from this mission. To when he goes back to play at Vegeta. Was that Bardock special? Was that canon slash was that a manga? Or was that just filler anime? I just you mean like the very first one? Um yeah, the one where he, you know he gets his fortune his fortune teller power or whatever. I mean, that was like the definitive Bardock story until they retconned it for the super stuff. Did they did they did they have a manga chapter for it? I don't think so. There's like I think there was flashbacks, but the anime they definitely had the uh you know they had that little I don't want to call it a mini series, I don't want to call it a movie. But just explaining, you know, the history of Bardock. Yeah, I would have to look if there I don't think there's dedicated unless it was a special. It could have been a special novel. Like the history of Trunks has a special novel that makes it canon. I mean, which also that's something too that's been thrown how the people in Japan, they don't care about the canon. They just make the stories. Yeah. And so why there's things in Super that you're like, dude, that did not happen in Z. Yeah. You know, or vice they, versa. Uh, yeah, they they don't. And like it's like, come on, like, how do you, how do you establish something and then just say, screw it? Like, 
Because if, if they keep doing that, then honestly, I'm, I'm counting GT as canon. You know, I'm just like, if you guys won't respect your source material, then I'm not going to care what it is. And GT is canon. So, it's like, I mean, you could theoretically say, I mean, it is an alternate. It's just like, it's the same ending. It's connected right after Z, just a different timeline. Yeah. That's how I've always, that's how I've always viewed it. The only show that's combined every thing in Dragon Ball lore is Heroes. Yeah. So, but I, I do, I am on the thing that this was his last, his last missions before yeah. sending Goku to Earth. But yeah, that tail popped off. It popped off real, real easy, real quick. Yeah. And um, thought he would, uh, you know, be in uh, more pain with that tail off, but you know, he did get tossed into a a mountain. So I guess that's that. But uh, um, what do you think about uh, Monado's wish that he made that um, that um, Goku and Raditz were going to grow up thriving? I think that was just a. I don't think that was great. A great part at all, to be honest, because then you got the people, some people saying that, oh, that's why Goku is who he is, because his dad made this wish 40 plus years ago. And then you have the people, well, there are people who are saying that because it's like, oh, that makes more sense, blah, isn't blah, it, blah. Isn't it funny, you know, as Goku has always been, you know, he's always solved the problems, you know. So everyone says that, you know, he has plot armor. You know, that's the phrase everyone likes to use. Goku has the thickest plot armor. Did they literally just admit to the plot armor? Did they make the plot armor itself canon? So like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a Batman reference here. Get ready to roll your eyes, Batman expert. So you shared in a group chat a couple of weeks ago that DC finally made it canon. That if Batman has prep time, he can beat any he, he can beat anyone, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So is this wish that Bardock made the equivalent of making the Batman um prep time theory canon? Like like I'm, I'm probably stretching this and I'm almost making more of a joke out of this. But did Toriyama just say I'm going to make plot armor canon. <laughs> like, I get, yeah, but it's like one of those things like where thriving could be subjective. Like we don't know what he means by thriving. Like is it just like strength gaining? Is it lifestyle? Like is it surviving? I, I, I assume it means that, you know, they, they're not like when, when they're, when they're put into a difficult situation, they're going to come out on top. So that's, that's what, like this chapter has been about, you know, exceeding your limits and surviving. I mean, the, the beginning of this arc is, you know, Granola the survivor, you know, all about surviving. And granted, it doesn't look like Brad. It's got the good end of that deal. Apparently the dragon must have brushed him off. But I mean, or or the dragon, it got nullified because he went against someone else who had the wish was applied to. Yep. So one of them had to go. So yep. he never would have met Goku. Maybe he never, he'd still be around. Yep. An unmovable object versus an unstoppable force kind of thing. Which one was going to win? So, but, yeah, but that know. wish was funny. I don't know if it'll truly have any effect for the rest of the thing, but that was just a funny thing. Yep. So, yep, that's, that's a little funny and goofy. Um, something else about the chapter here? Well, we can go to, let's just go to the one elephant in the room. Since you brought up the tail, we'll stay with that. When Bardock, like, when Monado took the hit and Bardock started fighting back and got the aura, we don't see this in color. What do you think that is? I mean, oh, previous, what's, his, what's his transformation? Yeah, because, like, on you, you know, on social media, everyone was saying, get ready to be pissed. Yeah. Get ready. Yeah, I didn't understand why, I, I, and I still don't. Like uh, Geekdom said that, you know, this is going to this chapter is going to rewrite um, everything. This is going to just demolish everything. And um, I, I don't 
I don't understand what the uproar was. Um, and here's the things that I think it could be like if they're talking about that um, they're retconning Bardock's story and that, you know, this is how he learns about Frieza getting ready to betray the race um, and not, you know, fortune teller uh, Bardock. Um, I mean, I don't think that breaks the lore because again, if um, like the animated series here, it says that it was a, a three part episode that took place between Z's episodes of 63 and 64. And, uh, and I, it just, there was a sequel manga to it. So it's like, I don't, I don't know how much canon it is, but regardless, it's like, I don't think that breaks it. Now we were in discussions that, you know, let's say Barlock goes super saiyan, right? Um, would we be pissed off at that? Um, I can't remember exactly how you looked at it. And I don't even know if it's how I thought of it. Maybe it is. We could always go back and listen. Um, I didn't have a problem with Bardock becoming a Super Saiyan. But, like, he couldn't keep the Super Saiyan form. Like, he had to forget how to go Super Saiyan. Because then it absolutely would not make sense and why he could not protect the Saiyans versus, like, Frieza. Because, you know, when Goku came back, from Namek and he was talking to Trunks and he said like you know and Trunks asked if he could transform at will um Goku said that you know it took it took a lot of you know practice to actually do it so like if Bardock won Super Saiyan I would be cool with it but there had to be things that tied to it um but we don't have a Super Saiyan transformation so that plot is dodged we get this and, and I'm just going to use this term loosely. Whoever's listening to this, if you're if you're the person that uh, was um, speaking to on YouTube um, videos about it, understand I don't have a term for this transformation, but I'm going to call this the false Super Saiyan God, or is a false Super Saiyan? Holy cow, let's not go too far with this. Um, for anyone who doesn't know where that term comes from, it's a kind of just a. Um, is a term in which the fandom gave to Goku when he fought Lord Slug in the Lord Slug movie back in the day. Um, Lord Slug was, um, was just an evil Namekian. Um, can't remember if he was um, Guru's evil half, kind of like, you know, um, King Piccolo and Kami and all that stuff. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but, um, but yeah, um, Goku seemingly turns into like this fake Super Saiyan. He has the golden aura, but he doesn't have the golden hair. It's like a mixture of almost Kaioken and Super Saiyan, but without the actual mixture. Um, but Goku's eyes go completely white in that transformation. So that's not what Bardock d- did here. Um, he, um, You can see his pupils just fine. So if this is a false Super Saiyan transformation, then the illustrations do not match. All right, but um, all I know is that this is a, a transformation power up of some sort. It has to be, um, and um, I'm just going to call it false Super Saiyan. But um, so you thought the false Super Saiyan? I actually I did think of that, but I actually went different. I meant more recent because since he, um, you mean Trunks? Just, no, um, Bardock. What he did? No, I meant like comparing Trunks's Berserker transformation in the anime to uh this but bar- i apologize no even even more even more recent because he just pulled he pulled his tail and then he powered up i'm going more even though his you can't tell because it's not colored i'm going more broilies like harnessing the same like he's going grade eight but since he doesn't have his tail he's harnessing that power like what broily did yeah so I, I think it's i that's what i'm that's the first thing I thought. I was like, all right, he pulled his tail, but Bardock could still power up like he's going great ape or whatever. Yeah. And then he harnesses that power because we've always saw what Broly did. And we said, man, this is the closest thing we've got to Super Saiyan 4 almost harnessing the great ape power in humanoid form. Now that'd be crazy if that's the way to beat uh, Gas to harness the great ape power mixed with all your other stuff. And we get some. Super Saiyan 4, that's my wishful thinking, but besides MUI 2, but that's what I thought of. It's, 
I mean, I mean, could be, could be. I, I ain't going to shoot that down. Um, we'll we'll get more answers. You see, we're going to get we're going to get answers next month with you know chapter eighty four. Just I was disappointed that. I, I didn't. I didn't mind the transformation. I, I. I thought you know the transformation was sweet. I just thought there was going to be a more clever way that to beat gas than just powering up, because it's what we always get. It's just how can you power up more than your opponent? Like I wanted like a special technique, or I wanted to know a weakness of gas or something like that. But no, it was just. Get your ass beat, turn Super Saiyan. Not this is not Super Saiyan, but you know, just get your ass beat and transform. And like, you don't have a problem with this, depending on what Chapter eighty four does. Because if Chapter eighty four it starts off, and we're looking at Goku and Vegeta, and they're like, "Really? That's all he did was just you know he just powered up and he just kept fighting until he just killed him." Then I'm gonna be like, well, at least they acknowledge it. Um, but if they're like, ah, oh, I get it now. We just gotta keep fighting and and, and kill him before he kills us. I'm gonna be like, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like that at all. And there's some people saying on Twitter, it's like, yeah, Bardock. They were saying how Goku is not, um, he's not determined. He's like, I was just like, what the hell are we talking about? I guess it makes sense from when, you know, Gas and Goku were fighting what Gas was meaning. You know, Bardock was going to fight not to, well, he, he was just, it was life or death. He was going to do whatever he could to win and didn't give, uh, you know, as he, as Bardock says here, what sort of idiot would think anything else besides victory? So, like, that's the thing with Goku is that he, he doesn't necessarily always just think of victory. He just, you know, he just wants to be better than you. He, he's never... He's never just going all out. Bardock's always trying to go all out. So I guess, I guess that'll be what Goku has to do or Vegeta has to do. You know, they just have to go all out. But uh, well, then we're going to get, as you said in the previous podcast, Goku's going to go MUI two, mm-hmm. and then this chat, then this arc's over, and then they everyone tells the truth whenever they're like, "Yeah, this arc's ending this year," because we. We put, you know, we we hit the pedal to the metal. You know, we hit the gas. You know, if we're, we'll be, continue to be punny with gas and name. Um, and it's it's just not what I want. I, I don't want Goku just, you know, I, I just want someone else. Like, I just, I just want someone else. So, it's just crazy. Yeah, and then Bardock blasted when he did that Omega um, blast where it Typically, when the video game is free, he yells like everything and blasts the uh, granola. I don't know how dude survived that. Oh, how how in the hell did gas survive? I mean, gas. Yeah, gas. I said granola. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah gas. No, you're fine. Um, it, what, what was this name of this attack? Wasn't it like a javelin something? Riot, riot javelin. Riot javelin. Oh, the good old days. Yeah, I don't know how how gas survived. Um, I mean, it, it knocked him out though. I mean, that's something though. Yeah, then he looks like a little baby. Yeah, he really does. <laughs> he looks like he looks like a like an eight year old. Like it's he's like, yeah, it's whatever. But um, um, there was one thing um, I can think about, um, and that is what's going to happen in the next chapter, and it has to go off of the last photo or the last illustration that's shown here, and that's the of the scouter. So. It, it seems like what's probably more likely going to happen, and I'm going to give a prediction of what I would rather happen, or I hope happens, maybe. So probably what's going to happen is, is we see the shot of the scouter at the end of this chapter, and we'll probably start the chapter 84 off looking at the scouter that's on the table, you know. Um, and the flashback is over, and we're going to see dialogue between Goku, Vegeta, and Monado as this granola is being healed, right? As gas is on his way from across the universe in 20 minutes, that makes no sense. Oh, well. And um, that'll probably be what, what happens. But that's not what 
I will, I like like what I think should happen because with again with the story in which they've been telling here, they are hinting extremely, not even hinting, they're they're bluntly reminding us that the sands are about to die at Frieza's hands. What I want or what I hope for or would think would be a good story here is that um and as a reminder, after Raditz got killed by Goku and Piccolo, we discover that um Vegeta and Nappa were listening in through Raditz's scouter and learning about um you know the Dragon Balls and th- that's what brings them to Earth. Right. So we know that these scouters can be communicated um, back and forth between each other. Um, what I hope for is that that when Alec and Frieza meet up here in the next couple chapters for this flashback or whatnot, um, if there is one, I, I hope Alec tells Frieza that a Saiyan defeated Gas and that, like, like, Maybe Alec to telling him will convince him to kill the Saiyans, but it would be like um, it would be amazing if Bardock, keeping his scouter on the entire time, allowed for Frieza to either watch the fight or listen to the fight, just as Goku and Vegeta are doing right now. Because you know when when um, Bardock transforms, Bardock says. To gas, he's like, you see, we sands have a way of growing and evolving every time we push past our limits. And if Frieza has a fear that the sands are going to someday overtake him, then seeing that Bardock got his tail removed and yet still ascended to another level would push his fear past the breaking point. And that's what would actually cause him to kill all the same. That's what I hope for. I hope Bardock was the tipping point for Frieza to kill the Saiyans. No, I I hear you on that, because my different thing with that, when we talked about it before recording, is since we were just combining everything, I said every bad guy in history needs to be mad at Elect and Cooler for uh, those who watched the first uh, Cooler's movie. Um, Cooler was wondering how come Goku wasn't killed with the rest of the Saiyans when Frieza blew it up and he was the one who let Goku's ship get past because he's like, oh, that's my brother's job. I'm not cleaning up my brother's mess. And Cooler, while he's getting burnt in the sun, realized he's the reason Goku's still alive. And now you go to elect, and that was a movie, so you want to throw that with the word canon, but this... Elect and Gas basically told Bardock, like, hey, your plan is about to blow up. And Radix was already off worlds, and Goku was there, and that's when he comes back to his wife and is like, hey, I'm going to send Goku off to planet Earth. I feel like something bad is going to happen to um, planet Vegeta, X, Y, and Z. So if Elect and Gas kept their mouth shut, Bardock probably doesn't send Goku off world. Goku dies with the explosion, and then this series never starts. So you can basically say everything now, candidly, is Alex's fault. Yeah. And uh, does, uh, you know, it's funny because Alec is the schemer. He's the one who does all these plans. And, you know, he's, he thinks, you know, knowledge is power. Well, he shared too much knowledge and didn't have control of the situation. And it bites him in the ass at the end of this arc. Or flip side, maybe he did it because we said how you said how Alec is going to be the one who, like, tells Frieza these sands, blah, blah, blah. Maybe he keeps that to himself and Frieza was going to blow him up anyway. And he's like, if there's any Sands who survive after seeing what we've seen, maybe they could take out Frieza for us. Yeah. So, yeah, Alex, Alex will do one or two things. He'll, um, like my previous prediction, you know, he's going to tell Frieza and then Frieza's going to kill him. Or like what you said, he's going to not tell Frieza. And, um, and then Frieza will, you know, just make the call on its own. I do I do think, though, that um, I remember what I texted you. Um, I do think that Alec is going to tell Frieza um, if he knows that Frieza has a fear of the Saiyans 
trying to overthrow him because Alec has continuously stated that he wants to be above Frieza and he wants the heaters to be the dominant um, prime organization in the universe. So he's going to find any way to bring down Frieza. And um, so maybe back then, knowing that the Saiyans were such a huge part in, you know, their galaxy or universe um, influence, he was like, okay, maybe I can get Frieza to, you know, um, sort of implode, you know, his organization to implode. I can get them to fight each other instead of me fighting them. Um, but maybe he was like, well, if I can get Frieza to kill the Saiyans, well, then the, you know, the Saiyans are out of my hair. But if any Saiyans, you know, will fight Frieza and kill him, then Frieza's out of my hair. Or maybe, you know, so um, it gets, it's always a better strategy. Don't fight the war yourself. Get other people to, you know, fight it. So, no, and I, I also think page 41, he had one of the, best lines i've seen a lot of people retweeting from a normal sense he's like when it comes to when that line when it comes to business there's the hand you show and the hand you don't that is true all throughout life yes <laughs> that, is, that is true you know um it's you know you just you yeah you don't you don't go all in with one hand sometimes you just gotta you know you play you play the long game play the long game you know you got you to do what's, you know, best for you and your family. And sometimes, you know, people just, they show you the hand they do business with and the hand they don't. So like you said, uh, next chapter is coming out on the 19th of May. We're going to be back to the present time. I do think this was the last time we're going to get any Bardock flashbacks in this arc unless... He randomly shows up subconsciously in Goku or something like that, or Goku has a sudden urge to want to meet him in the future, yada yada. But I think we're done with the flashbacks. We're going to be back in the present. I think we'll still have a flashback, but I don't do? think it's going to be a flashback of Bardock. I think there'll be an end. This is how Frieza gets involved, you know, just oh, through a flashback. I think that that'll would be, be a disappointment. Yep. Because it just. We can't count on Frieza showing up. If we're teleporting across the universe and Goku doesn't teleport to Frieza, then Frieza's not showing up. But I think there'll be a flashback of Frieza. All right. That worked. That'd be the way to see him. This dude was supposed to be supposed to be here a year ago, literally. And he is he's not. And we're the Things about to end, and we're not going to get him. So, except for this flashback, we're not getting him in present time. We're just waiting to see how this ends because they're they're going to come to the house. All of them will see if Goku and Vegeta are healed enough, one way or another. We still don't know what Alec is planning. I feel like whatever his main main plan is going to be shown like the second to last chapter of this arc, and then we'll be in a pickle. But again, once Goku goes MUI two, this is over. And everyone's now on board. If you go on YouTube saying, is Goku going to tap into a new thing of MUI? Yes, guys, it, it's happening. We've said it for basically almost a year. It's going to happen. MUI 2, Vegeta, who can, doesn't really have control over his ultra ego form, is going to be truly left in the dust when Goku has full control of UI, MUI, and MUI 2. You know, it, uh, it's a shame. It's a shame. We anything else, man? Nah, go Vegeta. Wish Vegeta would have been the hero of this entire arc, but nope. Yeah, the only thing I have is that for oh, the people. Oh, 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 oh. A little question, a side question, just based off of what we said. You, you had mentioned that um, you know a lot of people are mentioning on social media, you know how they wish, um, you know they brought back Raditz, mm-hmm. and. Um, and uh, you said um, no, and I said no, but we had different reasons for no. Um, would um, I say no because there's so many other characters in this universe that need character development? Why add someone for a cameo and us not get anything? Yep. Yeah. And then no, you I... said, why have Raditz when we have Broly? 
Mm-hmm. Yep. We got him chilling on a planet, um, fighting uh, Murno from a different universe and a different comic or manga strip. Uh, and uh, But uh, nope, he's not doing anything in this universe. Not at all. So, and even with Broly 2, it makes no sense what I was going to go into my next thing, that we do have a date for the Japanese uh, release of Dragon Ball Super Superhero. It did get pushed back because of the leaks. It'll be June 11th, 2022. That's a Saturday in Japan. And Broly is in the movie. He's on Whis and Beerus' planet with Goku and Vegeta and Whis and uh, Beerus. So it's like, if, in this ha- and if he's on that, you can't come and get him for help if you're cool enough to bring him to a god's planet? You know. Yep, yep. It, uh, it'll be interesting to see. He, he, you know he's only going to be in that movie for a cutscene, right? Like, he cannot... But that makes me wonder, like, um, what what's going to get them to that spot, you know, in the manga? Because eventually we'll get up to where the movie will be in the timeline. So, I mean, really has to make a appearance somewhere, but Probably not. Well, that's good. Anything else? Nope, that's it. I think. Yeah, yeah I think we're good to go. This was Bardock and Gas concluded. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. Thank you, Mitch, for being our Dragon Ball expert. Bardock and Gas is over. Let us know what you guys think of this fight. This fight was hyped up for the past two months or more. About, oh, how did Bardock beat Gas? Did he go super sand? Did he did that? Oh, yesterday, everyone's saying it was going to break the internet. And it really didn't do anything. For all we know, Bardock went his own version of freaking Aoken. We won't know until we get the colored manga. But we are going to be seeing. Mitch says one more flashback. I'm leading his way. But it might be, I don't think it'll be a whole chapter. It might be half. Then we'll go to present day and then. Goku's going to step out and say a Goku thing, saying, I know what I need to do, and we go from there. So let us know what you guys think of this chapter. Let us know what you would want to change. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C Podcast. Signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.